My name is Generosa Fierro. I'm the Outreach Coordinator for the Singapore MIT Gamma Game Lab. And we are here. This is actually our first uh, time in public, actually, as an entity. And we're really excited to be here at PAX. So what are you showcasing here? There's a lot of, a lot of indie games here. It's a lot of indie games. So essentially, a lot of programs do research, a lot of programs do development. We combine both. So we do the development of these games, and we do a lot of in-depth research into games as well. We've also invited a few local game companies, small companies, to participate. We really want to become a hub for, uh, for the Boston Indie Game community. And we sponsor Global Game Jam, and we recently had the complete uh, Jam game, uh, complete game completion marathon, which we raised money for Haiti. So we're just trying to do a lot of things to really bring independent gaming more vibrant in Boston and the Boston area. So how many uh, like people are actually involved in the Boston scene of gaming? Because it seems like there are like quite a few companies sort of around this area. So how many how many people are actually like actively engaged in the Boston gaming scene? It's a large amount of people, hundreds. Um, Someone who we really, Dar um, Darius Cosme runs a Boston Post Mortem, which is a monthly meeting of all the independent game people. And so we're a part of that. And companies like McGuffin and Deja Bon and Pangea and, and Firehose, there's so many really small game companies. And obviously, Harmonix being a big part of what's happening in Cambridge as well. So it, it's a very vibrant community and it's growing all the time. I, you know, we actually, there's a Boston Indie table as well over there, and we have two games in that as well as Firehose, as well as Deja Bond as well. So it's, it's really becoming a very, very tight community of, of independent gaming. So which is your favorite game here? You mean in the whole of PAX? No, 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 in, out, out of all of your children here, which one's your favorite? I, I do, I mean, we were just playing Carnival, and I have to be honest, Carnival is so entertaining. I mean, a lot of our games, you have to understand, are based on research initiatives like Dearth, is a Markov decision-making process that was done with the Artificial Intelligence Lab at MIT, CSAIL, and Waker and Woosh, you know, display really, really innate properties of physics. Um, Carnival is just silly fun. I mean, you're basically hurling this puppet throughout space. The sound on that game is amazing. Um, I, I really do enjoy playing that, but I think it's between that and, and oh, it's so hard, Dearth. I'm a big Dearth fan. Dearth is our game that's in the video game cabinet behind us. And that uses a Markov decision-making process. That was the one that was invented with the AI lab. Really fun to play, you know, with one person, but with two people, it's, it's a fantastic experience. You spend a lot of time yelling at each other, which I think is great. So are quite a few of these games coming out of MIT basically based on some of the research that other fields are doing, like AI and the physics um, stuff. Absolutely. So essentially, we come, these research ideas come through, and when the students come in, so every summer, Singapore sends us 40 of their best students who work on games in a nine week period. But what they're basically doing, they're not just making games out of, out of air. We have these research ideas, prove a Markov decision making process, make a game that would actually use the AI to the best advantage of what, of what can happen. And we end up with something like Dearth. So it's, it's a really interesting process to how these games come about. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming.